Okay, good afternoon all. We might as well kick off as we are. Those with watches are already in here, those of us without watches aren't, but not to worry. Uh, apparently there's some very important cups of coffee going on at the back there. No worries. Okay, a um, little bit of introduction. My name is Peter Kennedy. I come from the centre of the universe, which is Legion Shire Council in southern New South Wales. It's the best place on earth to live. Beaches, mountains, trees. We've got the real stuff. Okay? Now, Leaden Shire is about 1,100 square kilometres with a population of 12,000 people. Not what you'd call significant in the big scale of things, but it's an extremely rich, irrigated agriculture region. Council down there has had the brains to see that because we're such a small area, we do need a, a solid economic development program. In the last 18 months, approved the second economic development position. Uh, Mr. Paul Crack is here somewhere. Uh, he's the one with the heavy Kiwi accent over by the windows. Uh, cheap jokes aside, please. One of the things we worked out, though, is that in the scheme of economic development and business, there are actually not that many new ideas. There's a lot of things that have been done and done before and done very well, and in some cases done very badly. So, at an economic development function in Sydney, which some of you may have been at, the National Conference a few years ago, uh, I was in conversation with a colleague of mine from Shepparton, uh, Geraldine Christo, who at one stage was coming here, but due to her very busy schedule, had to uh, pull out at the last minute. Okay, what we did is we noticed that statistically, as far as we could work out from that moment, that Shepparton Council, although it was in Victoria, although it was two and a half times our size, there were some very significant uh, similarities between us. So we thought, there's got to be something we can do. So, the venture was born. The question is, how did it come about? Really, how did it come about? Well, I can tell you, it, the conversation was at the EDA dinner in Sydney on the 28th of October 2010, after a good deal of shirt absorption and some networking, as we call it. And the one thing that came about was we could really do something together, we thought. And when we got the ID um, program attached to our website, which is, I've been told this morning is not as good as REM plan, but I'll have to, have to deal with that. We noticed that statistically we were indeed similar. So, was there an opportunity for us to do something? Has anybody seen NCIS on television? Yes. What's the principal motivation for investigating to get to the bottom of things in that group of people? Leroy Jethro Gibbs, gut feeling. And that's what we had. We had the gut feeling. Jed, very outgoing, me, very quiet. Uh, Jed, willing to leap into the, the unknown, me, obviously very shy and retiring, wouldn't want to do that. Uh, we just felt we had that mixture together. We had the two places with similar uh, economic, agricultural, geographic type structures and opposing forces between the two of us that could really do something. And as I said, it's all built on the fact that there isn't that much that's overly new. So was the gut feeling right? I pulled a couple of little numbers off there because everybody's uh, PowerPoint has got to be really difficult to read, got to have lots of numbers on it. Um, I don't have a pie chart on this one, I'm sorry, but on my next, uh, next few charts I'll show you my version of a pie chart. As you can see there, there's enough similarities to make it close to the same point, but we never hid from the fact, as I said before, Shepparton is two and a half times the size, it's in Victoria. The other one I didn't mention is Leeton is heavily rice production driven. Shepparton is heavily dairy production driven. But if you accept that, everything else is so close. And as I said, I, I snapped a couple up there for you. I didn't want to put too many more because the print would get much, much smaller and then you don't have to read it then. Okay, we had to make a link together. So, why not let's have a sister cities arrangement? For precisely that reason, sister cities are seen by the community and the wide community as nothing but councillor and staff junkets. 
Every time there's one, in the, the, the mayor, the staff are frantically at functions justifying why they went and saying what's going to happen out of it. And they're probably right, but the wider community goes, not going to happen. They're seen as very expensive. And as soon as they arrive back from wherever they've gone, there are no results to prove why it happened. They do come, but at that time, very hard to justify. So there is an immediate mistrust and buy out by the community as distinct from buy in. Now, if you want to have any sort of relationship with anywhere, it has to be sustainable, it has to be self sustainable. And if the community think it's pretty much what you're looking at there, it hasn't got snowballs in hell. Okay. How can we be a sister city when we're not even a city anyway? We're a, we're a country town. Things that we have to make that, that happen. You have to get people to buy in, you have to get things that work. Ones that haven't. No established parameters. Nothing measurable for the people to say, but you said it would do this. It has or it hasn't. How much has it got to do? Again, it's hard ass numbering, pardon the French. It is saying to the people, we said it would do this by this, this by this. And they can see the proof or not. That's where your community support comes in. Because if you're one person driving the entire relationship, you haven't got much of a chance. And the mistrust between the partners and stakeholders. This was critical to why it was Leeson and Shepparton. Because Leeson is in New South Wales, Shepparton's in Victoria. There's a thumping great river in the middle. There is a state border in the middle. And with three hours by road, for you country people that's 300 kilometres, for you city people, it's a long way. There's no stoplights, all right? When you say three hours in the city, I know it's just going to the western suburbs, but it's 300 kilometres. And because of that, we were able to take away this mistrust. Neither would provide a threat to the other. Okay, how are we going to do it and who's going to do the work? The great 20th century philosopher, Mr. Jeremy Clarksonis, has said on many occasions, how hard could it be? Yes. Okay, we had to nail the thing down. It took quite some time to do this, so we started off. Where are we going to come from? What are we going to try and do? Promote some cooperative ventures. Put together some things where Leeson and Shepton will both win and will both gain from it with a little bit of effort from both rather than a hell of a lot of effort from the other. Share the ideas. Some things work, some things don't. Share that. Why should they do something? And then we do the same thing and we both fail. When one could have shared the idea and said, it didn't work, what if you try it this way? And it might work. Again, the balance comes. Promote the community organisation benefits. A very, very good friend and colleague of mine here said the other day that on a phone conversation, I said I was getting sick of the warm and fuzzy I needed to make a dollar. There is a place for the warm and fuzzy, although economic developers, we all tend to detest that crap. Get on and give me a dollar. And sharing council experience and resources. Very tricky, because as we all know, um, with due respect to our elected members, um, our, there is a degree of parochialism between shires, especially the neighbouring shires. Don't let them know we're doing this because they might steal our idea. Okay? It all happens at a minimal cost, because we're putting it together that way. Now, satisfying the volleys and the beam counters. It has to be documented properly. It's got to be done properly. It's got to be documented. It's got to be looked at from any occasion to say it works. And up came the business venture document. Everybody's waved theirs around. This is my pride and joy, this one. I stole, I mean, I, I borrowed the, the version of business uh, website, thinks the federal government website of a business plan, and just simply wrote it on that. And there it is. It's ready to go if we need funding, which so far we haven't. It's ready to go if someone wants to audit it or see what we're doing or why we're trying to do it. There's all sorts of things on there. The next trick was to approach the supporters and champions. We have a gentleman in uh, Leeson at the moment um, who's enjoying flying around in his larger leader jet. 
because he's a bit disappointed in the other one. He had just opened a retail outlet in Shepherd. And I said, Ted, would you mind if I dropped your name? Now, Ted's used to people saying, can I have some money? And Ted said, no, go for your life. If that's all you want, not a problem at all. And then he recommended me someone in Shepparton who would be a good person to talk about when I go down there. So I did. We went down there and said, oh, I've got a friend who's just bought a shop down here. And he said, Joe Blow uh, was a good person to deal with. And oh, they were chuffed. Like, it's like, like the guitarist, you know, saying, welcome, Kiama, I'm here tonight. Every, the audience goes mad. They think they're own. The legitimate planning document went back to this fellow. This is something we need to satisfy our masters. It's got all the bits and pieces. It's got the SWOT analysis. Um, it's got the reasons of failure. It's, it's a very large version of what I'm doing here today, by the way. Again, anybody wants to look at it, you simply wheel it out. Pick some easy wins. And there's some jokes I'm not going to make here. The easy wins are to get some runs on the board. Regardless of whether we like it or not, we are in the business of politics, we are in the business of success. So choose some easy wins, and we did. Publicise for community support. In the regional areas, I don't know how much different it is from a lot of areas to other areas, but in the regional areas we have certain media outlets that dominate public opinion. So we got stuck into those, and they were very helpful. We put little stories in about, this is coming up, we are hoping to do that. We're looking to do this, it will do that. And the big one. The reason we're all economic developers, we love being belted around the head and shoulders. But whatever happens, you stand up and keep on smiling. You must believe in it. Okay. The buzzword. Sustainability. To make this work, and I'm really dealing here at the moment with just putting this thing together. I'll get a little more into the meat of it a, a bit later on. Sustainability is all about the cost in time and money. In reality, that's a very pretty document, but that document could mean years of hard labour cracking rocks. It doesn't. So you have to take it into account and prove it. Community impact and engagement. Again, using the media to talk to the community, talking talk to some champions, talking to industries that will mix back and forth, Education was great. They said, love, we'd love to go down there. They've got some mega schools. We had some mega schools. If you've never heard of Yanko Agricultural High School, it's one of the foremost ag high, school, high schools in New South Wales. Dookie College in Victoria, the same. Strategies, how are we going to go about it? I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs on that one. Action plans, again, documenting what's going on so that anybody wants to scrutinise, it's there to be looked at. The SWOT analysis. I'll do it, Julie. Okay, initial activities. I told Lenny Carr and wandered down to Shepparton, fronted up to their Chamber of Commerce and said, hello, I've got all the answers to all your problems, come to me and I'll give you the sermon. Not really. Shepparton Chamber of Commerce was completely disengaged from Shepparton Council and that is death. Councils need chambers of commerce to be strong so they're not dealing with fragmented business communities. We are in the business of business. We, to deal with everyone individually, we need to deal with a group. So me coming down there, Daryl then set up the contacts. By the time we'd left, they were saying, yes, that sounds a good idea. Yes, Daryl Dean and, and Jeff Hay, would you like to come back to our next meeting? Two wins in one go, which was handy. She could take that back to her council. Community groups, the youth groups, they never set eyes on each other, but they talk electronically as kids do nowadays. Facebook, um, e-phones, iPads, whatever. They, can't, they talk to each other all the time and they're sharing information on running um, functions where they can get a performance to do both places one day after the other and cut the price. The men's shed, sharing designs on things they're making for sale. Sporting groups, we had an easy one because the Harness Racing Club was already in place. Again, an easy win. Tourism, this one's duck soup. You just share your events, you share the attractions you've got there, you do a bit of cross-promoting, you put their brochures up front, we put their, they, they put our brochures up front. If you've ever been to Shepparton, there are cows painted rainbow colours everywhere. It's quite amazing. 
big business and ag bodies. Again, a bit foreign to some of the western suburbs of Sydney, but when they actually make food, there are certain bodies that uh, run up your rice marketing boards, your wine grape marketing boards, dairy marketing boards, all these groups, get them together. Surprisingly, they're all businessmen. Council relationships. Easy. Because there is a real separation there, there is no threat whatsoever. The councils talk to each other. And there's even a possibility of cross-pollination of, of staff. Now, these have all been done before, but this is doing it better. <coughs> Promotion. Out in the print media, we have a, a very tame newspaper because they're good people. We give them stories. They print them. They love it because we give them inside runs on things. Shepparton, being a much bigger one, had a bigger audience. They were happy to do the same and leverage off ours. Online media, we had a resident nerd at one point who was doing all that for us. Unfortunately, he's gone and hugging trees and things like that. So, um, apologies to nerds in the audience. Uh, TV, TV found us. When they realised what was going on, how we were doing it, and how it was coming together, they came to us. And last but by no means, radio. I have a, uh, a love-hate relationship with the ABC announcer out of Wagga, who has a massive area to cover. A <coughs> delightful little blood nut by the name of Angelaney, who is a mad Collingwood supporter. So she loves Collingwood and I hate Collingwood. You know what I'm saying? So where does it go from here? What can we do with it to make it go onwards? Well, it's all very simple. That's it. You don't duplicate. Use that relationship. What they found out, use. What you found out, use. We have a far more hands-on because we're a smaller group. They have a far more hands-off because they're a larger group view of things. Chamber of Commerce report in, she in Shepparton. They paid a lot of money, courtesy of the Victorian government, and I like spending Victorian government money, on working the Chamber of Commerce, getting them new members, how to make them function. And there it was. They handed us a copy. Uh, just for your information, unfortunately it leans a lot towards council having to do a lot more through events coordination, but we'll go on with that later. Flooding emergency, back in March, both Shepparton and Leighton were pounding with the flooding. It was really scary stuff. It turned out okay. But again, there was, there was sharing of information as it went along. <coughs> Education, sharing support. As I said, we have major agricultural high schools in both locations. When you're an irrigated agricultural area, you don't need large farming areas. You can concentrate it down. As you concentrate, you can um, specialise more and therefore the specialisation breeds information and sharing. Complementary events and tourism. Very soon we will be running the first Rainbow Car Rally from Shepparton to Leeton. Now the Rainbow Foundation is the Zadie Foundation you may have heard of. Uh, Zadie Turner was a young lady, I'm, and I'm a little bit hate to she was seven or eight years old, dropped stone dead of a brain aneurysm, on the spot, crash. Her father, Alan, immediately said, I will donate all her organs uh, to anybody who wants them, because she was a delightful kid and I'd like to do that. The year that she died, she was the only child under the age of 16 in Victoria that donated organs. Alan set up the Rainbow Foundation, and now you'll see the rainbow shoelaces everywhere, they now major sponsors of, or sorry, major patron of them is the AFL. And they want to run a charity car rally from Shepparton to Leeton. And what will happen is they'll have a civic reception in, in Shepparton. They'll do the three hour drive, hooting their horns, collecting funds all the way up that three hours. Then they'll arrive in Leeton. We'll do a major charity, um, a major uh, civic function for them there. Again, collecting charity all the way. The shops all get dressed up in rainbow at both ends. We have an event. And it's all in the name of charity. Etc. 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 It's all about not reinventing the wheel. It's round. It goes on. This is just uh, part of the article. When the two mayors got together and signed, I was I put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into this as did Jed. And we worked very hard. And what was really pleasing is when the two mayors actually got together and shared some of their thoughts on it. They became even more passionate about it. That's uh, Mayor Paul Maiden on the left of Leeton and Mayor Michael Pollan on the right. Um, we uh, last week had the centenary of water in Leeton and, Mike in, and Mayor Michael Pollan came up and sat front row centre because he was such a, an invited guest. 
Uh, he was on one side of the aisle, on the other side was the governor's husband. Uh, very supportive people, they can see where it can go. And again, without the checkbook. Okay, here's the point where it comes to what do you think? Now, I want to make it perfectly clear this isn't all about Leek and Shepherd. This is about the fact that we had a bad shepherd, we think we'd work the kinks out. Now we want to share it with everybody else. The delightful Jenny at high speed this morning spoke about how she would share all these things. We're more than happy to do the same thing. Was that a chat? Uh, anything at all we can do with this, we're more than welcome to share. The cost so far has been basically petrol and phone calls, nothing else. And we are making so much headway. The men's shed boys want to get together and have a cup. Uh, that's a worry. We're going to put them on a bus. You know what we're going to do on a bus on the way down, on the way back. It's not drink tea. But why not? It can be done. And I promise you, that's where it came from. It came at the dinner for the Indian National Conference in Sydney at the, I think it was a surf club. After a few shirties, it just happened. This is the best thing about economic development in Australia, is the networking. I don't think that was one of our better conferences, but gee whiz, I've got a lot out of it. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. I'll be back a little later on uh, with the panel discussion. My friend Kim down here has set me up to be I'm mean, some panel members. And uh, it won't be your standard panel. We're going to do it a little differently. I hope you all enjoy the one.